Tony here at Random Adventures 2.0. What are we doing and where are we at? <laughs> well, uh, where we're at, we're at um, Mesa Vista. So uh, we entered the uh, park. Uh, it's early and you can hear an echo because I'm standing underneath the roof thing. So we went, we stayed at a Walmart last night. <laughs> so we'd be close to here so we can get in here bright and early, so the gate wasn't even uh, taking uh, tickets yet, <laughs> so uh, I didn't have to use my pass, but it is only $20 to get in, but I've got the national pass. If you come in before 8 o'clock, you just drive right in, and it's open all the time. So, man, wasn't that an awesome uh, sunrise this morning? Uh, it was pretty cool, uh, and the other thing on the way out here, I don't know if you noticed it or not. It's going to be a straight on shot at the sun, but to the right side of it was a rainbow. And it's, it was just right over there as we were driving. All right. So what are we doing? Well, we got about 20 more miles to drive to find some dwellings. So we're going to look for some dwelling places. Uh, I believe it was a Pueblo. Um, dwellings. So I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> if you're ready, let's get going because I tell you what, we've got a busy day planned. So we're going to go here, but then we're going to go somewhere else and it's like four hours away. So uh, let's see what we can get done here and get on the road. All right, here we go. On the snow. <laughs> Don't slip. And steps. And a Subaru. <laughs> All right. This Subaru's been doing really good for us. But we're going to drive out that way right there. 20 more miles. I don't know what to expect. So we're going to find this out together already. Yeah, so when you first enter in the gate, there's the uh, big butte that you see. I did take some couple pictures of that because... The sun that was hitting it was just uh, golden. It was really neat. And uh, yeah, that was beautiful. So that's the first thing you see when you come in here. And then there was that landslide <laughs> with the cones around it that we had to avoid. Uh, so we worked our way up to the top. I believe we're at the top. And we're going to run out a, a road here. Uh, it says no stopping, no parking because there's landslides. All right. Getting out here early in the morning like this is uh, really a treat, and I, I wish you didn't have any any uh, traffic with lots of extra people. <laughs> so I think right now we got the park to ourselves, a 2.0 exclusive. <laughs> there you go. Uh, look at this <laughs> tunnel ahead. Turn lights on. Our lights are on. Oh wow, this is cool. We get a tunnel already this morning. It's not even eight o'clock yet, and we got a tunnel. Oh, this is awesome. Yep, gotta do it. <coughs> yeah, this morning, uh, as we were getting going, um, I had to top off the fuel, so I went to Mavericks. Man, I love that Mavericks store. I do really like it. It's uh, very clean, got bathrooms, and uh, yeah. Now, when I was at, at Walmart, you know, I went in there and did my shopping, and I, I met Alton, and uh, I'll throw his picture up here again, but Alton was a big help because he was local. He told me about uh, Mesa Verda, and uh, he said he's been up here already at um, midnight. He came up here one time just because of the stars, but all the overlooks, you just keep climbing higher and higher. Yeah, just to let you know, the temperature right now is uh, 43 degrees, and it's dropping the higher we go. Oh, good. Do you notice a difference uh, between this video and the last one? Guardrail. <laughs> so, <laughs> they got guardrails. <laughs> that coming over that million dollar highway yesterday, or uh, in that last episode, no guardrails. Man, that was crazy. That was a little shaky. This road is just winding around and we keep going higher and higher. 
Alrighty, right here we're at 8,271 feet above sea level. Oh, look at that view. <laughs> look how high we are. You can see way down there in the uh, valley there. Look at this cutaway. You can see the different layers. That black up there and that gray and the tan. Yeah. And the white which is snow. <laughs> yeah, we're just climbing up and up. You don't think we're going to be going up because I don't see any more mountains, but we're up. We're over 8,327 feet and climbing. Yeah, we got a horseshoe turn coming up here, but look out across that valley go slow so the 3,000 or 8,376 feet of elevation right here look at that pine yeah this is a nice road and it just gets up on top of this uh, mesa and just runs all the way out and we're climbing so this isn't an is not an official overlook, but I had to stop and just show you this. Look at this. Look how high we are. And you can just see down into that valley. Amazing. So where we came from, you can see the road right over here. It wraps around and goes on the other side. We were on that one over there, it wraps down and around and goes that way. And we gotta go way out that way. <laughs> you can see the road just keeps running along the Mesa here. And there's the Subaru. <laughs> All right, let's get back in it. It's cold out here. Oh, look at that horse. I'm gonna swing the car just to turn it a little bit. Can you see him? There's some wild horses right there eating the grass. Wow. Alrighty, so I used the restroom and one of the park workers was right there and I asked him for a map. I got a map and he gave me the lowdown on the park here. So I will get to a spot where I can pull the map out and show it to you. So we are going to drive, but I'll tell you what. There's a lot of stuff that we're not gonna be able to see because of uh, road closures, snow. There's one area that's got six feet of snow in it still. All the campground areas are closed, a lot of the trails are closed, and a lot of the loops getting to the uh, structures, there's one whole road. Well, I'll tell you more about it here in a second. All right, so this is the road we came in on right here. So we followed this all the way out to 23 miles. Now, right here, this route here, all the way through here, is going to be closed for the next several years because there's an old water line that's in the middle of the road that had five leaks in it last year. So they had to keep digging the road up. Uh, so they're going to replace that because that's from 1930s. So he said that is not going to be available at all to go out. So when you we came out this road and then we went around this loop. Now, we were right in here where I saw him at. That's where the bathrooms were. Now, this uh, Mesa loop, this whole thing is closed. So you can't see any of the dwellings that are out in this area or in this area. So... He said to go back out to that stop sign. This is where we turned right and came out this way. And then turned left and came out here. And then so right now we're in this area right here. Now there are a couple things that we can see. But this palace, uh, this one here, uh, Cliff Palace, it says you need a ticket. But it also says closed in the winter. So... And it's winter still. So 
we're going to try to go to Balcony House, see that. So we're going to take this uh, 1.2 mile trail to this viewing point right here. And then we're going to come back and we're going to try to see uh, Spruce House and Cedar um, Tree Tower. Spruce House we might be able to see. No, we won't because that's over here. Uh, where that is closed. Now, the museum and everything is all closed as well. So, maybe we are going to do some overlooks. I don't know. <laughs> so, but this will get us uh, down the road a little quicker to our next location. All right, let's see what we can see here. All right, so we're parked up there. Oh, look at that cedar. <laughs> so, that's the parking lot up there. I'm going to take my chances and I'm going to walk down this path. Um, yeah, this is. Uh, I want to see if I can see anything. Man, I hate to drive all the way out here and not be able to see anything, but straight across there you can see how that fire damage back in 2000 just came to the edge of the edge of this canyon and didn't go any further. Now, the cliff dwellings probably would not have gotten damaged at all because they're in the cliff. All right, so we're going to keep walking down this trail here. It's going downhill. <laughs> I just got to make sure I can get back up. All right, let's go. All right, look at that. So there's a viewing area. So if there's a viewing area, maybe we can see something. All right, so let's get on down there. So just looking at this sign here. So if you do decide to do this, um, says visiting the cliff, cliff dwellings will involve strenuous hiking and climbing. And if you have any health problems, do not attempt. Look at that elevation, 7,000 feet. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> but they've got it all blocked off. We can't even get down in there. Uh, but we're going to walk out to this viewing area and see what we can see. So you can see they got it gated off right here. And it says, uh, ticket holders, please wait for Ranger here. So you can see across the side. Let's take a walk over here. Oh, they got a storyboard. Let's take a look at that. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to stop right here. I don't want to walk any further because I see the top of one. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at that. Wow. This is Cliff Palace right there. So <laughs> if you're going to take the guided tour, uh, that'll take you down uh, to it. And you can, I guess, climb around there because the picture showed you're climbing ladders. And I see a wooden ladder way down there. But look at that. It's built right into the cliff. Oh my gosh, we saw one. <laughs> this is too awesome. Yeah, look at that. Oh, let's get some better looks at it. Oh, and there's steps that go way over there, too. Oh, amazing. Yeah, would you look at that? That is amazing. I am glad we went ahead and walked down the trail here uh, because that is simply amazing. That was well worth the 23 mile drive, even if this is the only thing we see. All right, let's go check out some more. All right, here we go. Look at the mustard colored lycotropin. I believe that's lycotropin as well. Just a different variety of it. Yeah, I met a through hiker. I believe it was last year. His trail name was Lycotropin. I said, "Why? Why is your name that?" He says, "Because I'm a oh, uh, I don't know what it, it's called anymore." But he studies Lycotropin, <laughs> so that, was, that became his uh, trail name because he always talks about it. But I have never seen mustard-colored Lycotropin. Wow, <laughs> that's cool. 
Alrighty, so we are back in the car. We're gonna continue out around this loop. Uh, so this is Cliff Palace Loop. So this is really the only loop that we can be on. Uh, all the rest of them are closed for various reasons like I talked about. And uh, I just talked to Nathan, who is a ranger here, and uh, he gave me a couple pointers. Thank you, Nathan. And uh, make a comment every once in a while and say hi. And I've got my seatbelt on, brother, already. Ah, here's another uh, Cliff Canyon. Let's see what this looks like. All right, this one's Cliff Canyon. Let's go take a look. Okay, so the car's just parked right up there. So you just walk down this little path, do those steps. There are some steep steps. A little like a troping. <laughs> All right, and then you got this viewing area. So there's a storyboard right there. So let's go take a look at it. So we've got a couple different ones here of cliff dwellings. Now they're one of the things that Nathan said is it's good to have a pair of binoculars because they are harder to see, but they're on the opposite uh, cliff from where we're standing. But this is a good viewpoint. All right. So this one here, it's a house of many windows, 15 rooms and one Kiva. I guess that's how you pronounce that. Uh, this one straight across, it's 16 rooms and two Kivas. And then some point cliff dwelling. Uh, three rooms and a shallow on a shallow ledge. I'll show you that one here in a second. Then you got the mummy house, and then up on the uh, mesa loop, which is closed, uh, there is the uh, sun temple. All right, so let me see if I can zoom in or something on that house of many windows. That's going to be way down there on that corner. All right, you can see it right there in the center of the screen. That's a long way away. I'm out 12 times. So you can see it right there. Yeah. It makes you wonder how they actually got to those. That is really out there. And it's down in the cliff in that little crease. Okay, this one here is the uh, Site 634, 16 rooms. You can see it. Now that's running in the same groove, that same vein. In fact, they all do. So this is the next one over. I'm going to zoom way over. There you go, right there. So that's the uh, Sun Point Cliff Dwelling. That's got the three rooms. Yeah, And that's in that same vein. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. All right, you can see it over there. See that line? I'm going to go back to one time. Yep, so right there's one time. So that vein right there, that's what they're running in. You just follow that along, and then you get to that, you know, arch right there. And right there is that 16 room. And then you follow that same line straight out and right in there is that other one all right so i'm gonna see if i can find the last one so this one's a little harder to see because of the shadows but that is the uh, 12 room mummy house all right and then up on top is the sun temple which we could not see well you know what uh, maybe we can zoomed in right there it is all righty pretty cool so this is another look right here, and I'm just going to scan across. So that's the mummy and the sun temple. That's the sun point cliff dwelling. Then that arch right there is the uh, site 634. And then you've got the house of many windows out there on that point. All right, let's get going. That's pretty awesome. Let's get up these steps. So that's pretty cool. We're actually getting to see more than I thought we would see. I didn't know we were going to see that many at that one stop. On the way, walking back to the car, take a look at these purple flowers I saw. Man, look how fine and delicate those uh, petals are. Yeah. Pretty cool. 
Uh, this looks like a pretty cool viewing area here. Hemingway House. Look at the stream that runs down along there. You hear the birds. So this is the Heming Hemingway House. The sun's behind it. So it's hard to see. I might have to zoom in on this one too. Let's take a look. So this is going to be very hazy because we're looking straight into the sun. But you can see the uh, top shelf there. So as you come across, uh, there's the skyline in the burnt forest. But you drop straight down and there you go. There it is. So this one here was the only structure named after a woman. So what's in a name? So the cliff dwelling directly across the canyon is named for Mary Tilson. I believe it's Tolston Tal uh, Hemingway, who funded the first scientific archaeology expedition in the Southwest. At the time, a lot of cultural objects were being removed for souvenirs or uh, profit. Uh, but she was from uh, Boston. She was a Boston philanthropist, and um, she used her fortune to support many uh, causes in uh, Virginia um, McClurg and uh, Lucy Peabody. Um, they used, well, she used her influence in Washington, D.C. to gain support for the idea of protecting or making this a national park. And then, um, you know, Virginia, what she did, she made it her life's cause uh, to actually, in the 1800s, uh, to protect these structures. And um, yeah, look at that. So way to go, ladies. All righty. Perfect. So right over there it is again. Let's get back in the car. So yeah, we're pulling out of that one. That was a really neat one. It was hard to see because it was in the sun, but there's a lot of neat... Um, viewing areas so they've got handicapped spots that you can park at now you won't necessarily on the big one um, the palace uh, cliff one you won't be able to get down to that if you're in a wheelchair because there was no ramp uh, but for the most part you can walk up to these viewing areas uh, and see uh, still get to see some of the cliff dwellings pretty neat this is a great little park yeah, I'd imagine if it was open, you know, more other areas, I think it would be pretty... Oh, my goodness, look at that big drop-off there. Yeah, so you're running right out along the, <laughs> the cliff sides. Yep, as you're driving around these loops. Boy, the sky's clearing up. All right, we're going to take a look at another one. I don't know if this one is a um, trail or not. I'm going to take a look at the map over there. Uh, but this one's called Balcony House. All right, let's go take a look. Yeah, so this one's Balcony House. And you can see right over there is a chain and a sign that says closed area. But they've got a little... Uh, sign here of what it looks like so this is a raised area topographical so you can see there's uh ladders and stuff and uh but it says it's directly below us uh so the balcony house is located in an alcove below you uh since you can't see it from here please use your sense of uh, touch to explore balcony house through these tiles so that's the balcony house yeah I think there's a viewing area, and that's where that would go to, unless that goes to it. I'm not sure. I'm going to check things out a little bit more around here. All right. But look at this seating area. Yeah. Oh, there's the Subaru. I'm shaking when I walk. Yeah. Let's see if I can stabilize it. And then just give you a pan out there. Look at that. So that's the canyon. Yeah. Really beautiful. Okay, here's a better uh, image. 
So one, you go that way and down and around them off the map here for a reason, because that's where the trail comes. So one, look at that. You climb up this ladder. So one is a climbing up a 32 foot ladder to enter and two small ladders and 12 uneven stone steps within the site. Two, which is way over here, it says, crawl through an 18 inch wide by 12 foot long tunnel. Yes, that's interesting. Three, four, and five ascending a 60 foot open cliff face with uneven stone steps and two 17 foot ladders to exit. So that's three, four, and five. So they've got uh, blow up pictures here. So that's the one ladder. This is the tunnel, all right, that goes through here. And then three, look at this ladder. Look at these kids doing that. Wow. So that's going up right here. And then you got uneven steps, four, another little ladder, and then five. Here's another ladder going up, and that's all the way up to here. And that exit is right over here to the right. Yeah, down a little further. <laughs> but this is the uh, pavilion area. All right, <laughs> let's get back in the Subaru. Uh, it's kind of glad that's closed, <laughs> right? All right. I'm still going to see if I can maybe see it from uh, out the road here. Now, don't get me wrong. I would have done it. Yeah, <laughs> if, if uh, it was before my stroke. I'm not good at climbing things yet. Uh, yeah, but getting there, eventually, maybe we'll come back and I'll do it some other time. I got to get my seatbelt on. Yeah, so here's a Soda Canyon Overlook Trail. 1.2 miles round trip. Hmm. All right. Let's check it out. All right. There's the sign. 1.2 mile round trip. All righty. Here we go. Looks like a pretty smooth path. Yeah. That's good. Let's see. Canyon Overlook Trail. All right. Oh, you know what? We're going to be able to see that balcony house. That looks like uh, three different places we can uh, get pictures. All right, let's get going. Yeah, being able to walk in, in this forest here is pretty cool all in itself. Look how weathered and gnarled that is. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, <laughs> all right, <laughs> let's keep walking. Oh, looks like we got, it goes down some. All righty. Well, that's a pretty big one. Yeah, that little pine there right in front of that. I, I believe that's a cedar. I don't know. It seems like it is. I could be wrong. That's up there. That's one of the taller ones I've seen. That's an old one too. Yeah, just, I'm just taking it all in. Wow. Yeah, so beautiful. Yeah, there's a lot of downed trees that have fallen over that have just rotted. So uh, whenever lightning struck or whatever caused that fire, there was plenty of kindling on the ground to fuel the flames. Uh, we got a downhill here. Uh, so I'm going to take my time and then we got to go over that way. So that's the steps you come down. So then we'll have to go back up them. <laughs> it's a good workout. So we're just going to follow the trail and keep on going. Yeah, back there. Let me throw a picture up. I saw some white flowers. They were really awesome. 
Yeah, here's a picture of those. Yeah, so we got some uphill that we're doing on this side too. All right, yeah, aren't those flowers amazing? So that was just a very little patch of them uh, on the side of the trail. Oh, look, there's some uh, grizzly bear, prickly pear. I called them prickly pine the other day, but those are the grizzly bear ones. That's because it's got the longer needles. Yeah, all right. I'm delaying because of the uphills. <laughs> Just kidding. So when I first parked and got out of the car, I heard a, a woodpecker. I'm not sure if what type, but see the bands, uh, the peckings around the tree. This is all <laughs> caused by uh, woodpeckers. Yep, and they're going all up and down this one. Yeah, I heard them earlier. I don't know if I caught them on video or not, uh, the sound, but maybe we'll hear them again. Ooh, there's a spider web in the rocks. Yeah, I don't see any spiders. But I bet you they're pretty big down here. Yeah, I've seen all kinds of things on the trail. This is a horse scat. Yep. I believe, <laughs> probably from some of them horses we saw earlier. Yeah, so there's uh, wild horses that are out in these, uh, up here on this mesa as well. I don't know. Let's see if I see any tracks. But that was kind of old scat there. So we're parked way over there, and uh, this is the trail we're working out. But I believe those, I said cedars, but possibly juniper as well. I don't know if you know, throw it down in the comment section. I do have a plant identifier, but I don't have any service, so I don't think it works on my phone right now. So in this dried mud, you can see some footprints. Those are uh, hoof marks. Boy, that's a big one right over there next to that tuft of grass. So, yeah, just look in the mud. Yeah, some of the nice things about being slower is you get to look around and look at these flowers. So they are really low to the ground. They're small. They're just off the trail right underneath this uh, tree here. I'm gonna get a picture of that. Yeah, one thing about, you know, the stroke, it actually makes me, because I'm slow, I'm more observant, you know, because I'm looking around, seeing things like those purple flowers, the white flowers and the, you know, where most people would just walk right by because they're headed to see the uh, cliff dwellings. But this gives me an opportunity to really look around like that orange lycotropin. So cool. Man, this is a beautiful area. Great walk. Like these purple flowers here. Amazing. Yeah, and they're right in amongst the prickly pine and the purple flowers and the grays of the uh, weathered trunk. Yeah. Look, there's more over there. Beautiful. And they're so delicate too. Come on, focus. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I ain't ever gonna get there. All right, so I'm starting to see Canyon, so I believe we're getting there. Yeah. Let's get on over. Take a look. Yep, <laughs> so Soda Canyon Overlook, all right. I did the trail. Why didn't you see it? Well, I just filmed. Oh, look, there's the canyon. Let's get on over there. And then, don't, <laughs> my phone died. Oh my goodness, I have three power banks, portable power banks in the car. I never grabbed one to go. But to be honest, I think the trail and what we saw on the trail was well worth the walk. It was a long walk. <laughs> it was a mile point two up and down. I'd take you back there again. Uh, but to be honest with you, 
the picture board <laughs> that we saw before we found this trail you can see it a lot better on there <laughs> and uh, I would say check their website out and look it up <laughs> we got a lot to do today and I don't want to do another 1.2 mile round trip that um, yeah that was a little rough it, it was to be honest with you it was rough yeah uh, get hydrated <laughs> All right, but that uh, patch of flowers, them white flowers, that whole way out and the way back, that was the only patch of those white flowers that I saw. There was none other. I did see some other little, real little yellow ones, but my phone was dead. Uh, but I did get a picture of those at another time, so it wasn't something new. All right, well, let's get on the road. <laughs> Oh, I think it's 46 degrees. I got the wind down, but I'm about ready to turn the air conditioner on. Take this sweatshirt off because we got a four hour drive after we get out of here. All right, here we go. So we're going to work our way back out this road. I've got the phone charged up enough that I can keep it going every once in a while, but I don't know that there's too much more in this park. Now, while I was sitting there charging my phone up, um, four cars at different times pulled up, looked at the sign, and then pulled away. <laughs> so, yeah, they ain't doing the hike either. <laughs> at least we did it, <laughs> but we just didn't get the overlook. Uh, but I did see it from down there. Um, yeah, and like I said, the picture on the board, it's so far away, it's so hard to see. and. If I zoomed in, it would just been blurry. Uh, so, yeah, you got a good look at it on the storyboard. Yeah. Oh, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> yep. All right. Here we go. Yep. So that's it. So that's Mesa Verde. Uh, yeah. I'm going to say if you want to come now, you're only going to see about three quarters of it. But if you come at another date maybe two years from now <laughs> so this is uh 2023 so maybe they'll have more of it open but what we saw was well worth it i think it was well 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 worth it yep all right let's get on down to route 60 and head east all righty here we go yeah, look at this, exploring the Four Corners region. So, look at that. We've driven mostly a lot of this. Say, Kayenta, we were at 160. We were up near Balding. And then you come over into, here's Colorado, um, which we were in Durango. We were more north. Uh, we haven't been down in this area yet. Uh, so, yeah, look at that. So there's a lot to see right in the four corners here. And it's four corners, um, all the different tribes used to meet in this area and do trading and stuff like that. And uh, we still do that today. All righty, let's get going. All right, we're heading back towards Durango, which is in 27 more miles. So this is um, going to be... A, about a four hour drive and where we're going we're going to the great sand dunes so this portion of the journey we were chasing in the last episode a sunset so we came all through this portion in the dark um, yeah and if I remember correctly it goes up <laughs> so we're down in a valley we just went through a little uh, historic town of um, Manchos, I believe it's called. Um, yeah. Not much there. Uh, so I didn't know what was historic about it. But uh, there was uh, no old buildings that I saw. But some little ranches. That's about it. All right. I'm not going to record too much until we get on the other side of Durango. But I did want to give you a look at this. Uh, this is what we came through at night. Um, so here's a look at it in the daytime yeah a lot of pine trees 
And if I remember last night, I saw um, elk crossing signs uh, to be on the lookout for elk. I'm on the lookout. <laughs> so if I see any, we're going to definitely get that on film. Yeah, I don't know if they'd be out in the middle of the day like this, but it is 56 degrees right now. So, and it is 1234. Okay, I said I wasn't going to record till after we get past Durango, but yeah, we got another view here. So we're descending uh, over that one mountain ridge that we just came up. We were running along the valley, a lot of um, cattle, fences, and stuff like that on both sides of the road. And uh, then we just crested over a mountain, and we're coming down the other side. I just thought this was an amazing another view. Yeah, you can see out for a long, long way. Alrighty, so you'd make a right-hand turn if you wanted to go to historic Durango, but we've been there. <laughs> so we're going to continue on 160 East. So this is going to be all new. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> so uh, I'm not still driving, right? <laughs> so I'm just looking at the map. I've been editing. Um, I got to the little town of Fort Garland and I got here. Oh my goodness, it was late. That drive from Durango, when we're coming out of Durango, there was so much on Route 160. I mean, we go over, um, it's called Wolf Creek Pass. It was stunning. There's a treasure falls that is right there, and there's three feet of snow. But we go through areas where there was avalanches, and uh, just the, the beauty of that drive over that Wolf Creek Pass, I shot so much footage when I was sitting here editing for coming out of Durango, when we got to Durango, I already have, I have 42 minutes in this video already. So I'm going to cut this one short right now. <laughs> and the next episode, we're going to go, oh, Treasure Falls, going to go over Wolf Creek Pass. And then we're going to go to the Great Sand Dunes uh, National Park. That's back that way about, 20 some miles but I get there just as the sun started to go down um, there is water uh, running the wind was blowing I was like uh, in a sand blasting machine um, it's so windy and noisy and but it's magnificent it is amazing and I can't get that footage of Wolf Creek Pass and um the sand dunes in with this one. Um, what, that was amazing at Mesa Verde. And I want that to be a standalone video because it was just, it was just stunning. Amazing. And I still apologize for not taking my battery bank with me. <laughs> so uh, that was a rookie mistake. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. I want to say thanks a lot for coming along. I really, really appreciate you. And, uh, Hey, and this is the way it's going to be, right? And so, all right. Cue that music. I got to get to bed, but I still got to edit two more videos and get it, get it up. And I'm only working off an hour and a half of sleep from yesterday. And I've got to get these off my phone so that I can record tomorrow because... I'm going over another pass tomorrow. So, man, and then we're going to hit the Fort... 14ers, these mountains ranges that are going up towards Colorado Springs. Wow, it sounds I'm looking at it on my map. It looks amazing. So, oh, we cued the music. Oh, I better hurry up. <laughs> All right, so remember it's one adventure at a time. And hey, go have your own adventure too. And uh, boy, it's getting late. All right, good night, Tony 2.0. You take care. Have a great night. And we'll see you on the next random adventure. Alrighty, alrighty. Out.